Joining us right now on the Harbor One Hotline, it is the owner of the Boston Celtics, Wick Grosbeck. Hey, Wick. Big smile on my face. Can't wait. Well, I was going to ask, are you more nervous about tomorrow's game or your band's performance Sunday night opening up for Zach Brown? Which, uh, which are you more nervous about? Well, don't tell Zach, but he's going on. He's playing an acoustic set before we go on. So I don't know who's opening, but I know who's second place on the bill. I know that. Uh, I see. Zach's Zach Brown, the opening Zach act. is opening for your band. Yes. <laughs> very glad. Very glad to be there supporting the amazing cause and the Hill Foundation. Really appreciate it. And I'm actually playing tonight at the Hotel Commonwealth, warming up with the uh, – with a, with sort of a band put together for Hot Stove Cool Music, which is Theo Epstein's thing. So we've awesome. got I, I'll be warmed up from tonight. Now, be honest, Wick. Did you have anything to do with the Saturday game one scheduling so that Sunday night remained available? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's uh, I I'd like to think I'd have a little cloud around the league after twenty years, but I don't think it extends to that. I did, uh, and I'm not going to say anything about the Hawks versus the Heat either. Um, I didn't have anything to do with that game. So the the Hawks took us to seven in 2008, by the way. And that was when Al Horford was a rookie down there. He remembers. So we are, we treat them very, uh, they're dangerous. They've got great players and we are, uh, we have to watch it. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you look at this season and there have been, I mean, it's, it started uh, in an interesting way with an interim head coach and, uh, you there. Interesting is one word. I haven't called it interesting recently. <laughs> I call it other things. <laughs> there's, there's, there have been some ups and downs. Uh, certainly, when it when it comes to where this team would end up seeding wise, um, you look at h- heading into this matchup and uh, being the the second seed uh, when it comes to the playoffs. You comfortable with where this the way this team ended the season? Yeah, I I actually am on a on a winning streak, and uh, they are, and I. Here's what I think. Um, I think they've given us a lot of uh, outside commentary that it's, it's sort of like no one believes in us. You had ups and downs, this and that. I mean, we had the second best record out of 30 teams, one game behind Milwaukee or whatever, and we beat them by 41 the other day. And it's like, oh, these guys, boy, this is a sort of a B, B plus. It's not a B plus, but that's fine. Let's let's say it's a C and get them totally pissed off, basically. I think all the, what I would say is, uh, well, you lost three games, four games along there that you shouldn't have lost. Yeah, we probably stole some wins too, but I think uh, I'll take us against anybody. Well, Wick, I think that's the one of the biggest things, at least from where I'm sitting watching this team, is my expectations are get to the championship and win it, right, based on what you did last year and based on the the, the kind of what Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum have done all season long. So are yeah. those the same type of – feelings that you have exactly wiggy i mean i i think it's uh it's not disrespect so much as but it's definitely not uh oh my god they're 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 so amazing it's like well they really like i said i've already made that point but i i like the sort of disrespect card i like the fact that jalen and jason both had the years of their best years of their career and and with records being set and everything else and i like the fact that our motto for the postseason is unfinished business so you know we've got a mission and let's see what happens um you you mentioned outside noise and we look at we as uh, doing this job and as fans look at everything from the outside so we're not there Uh, how is you you brought up jalen brown how is he when 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 you're interacting and and organizationally how is how is he feeling because from the outside we're not we don't know yeah, uh, it's really, really good. We gave him the Red Auerbach Award a couple games ago for a reason, for a number of reasons. Uh, but the reason being his uh, exemplifying what it means to be a Celtic in the community as well as on the court. And he's taken another step forward on the court. We've all seen it. And he's always taken steps into the community and really led the way um, in many ways uh, with the conscience of the team and the focus of the team and the on things that are important. And so uh, there's a warm relationship there and a positive relationship and unfinished business. And I'm, you know, that's, that's where we are. We're we're in a great place in Jamie. 
Wick, it feels like the best part about this team is while you have the superstars like the Jays, you look at the roster and you have guys that, that step up when they need to, whether it's Malcolm Brogdon or Derek White. How, how important is that as you guys head in, into the postseason that you have guys, you have depth on your bench that are able to come in when it matters? Yeah, I totally agree. We we do have that depth. I mean, I think if we had Malcolm last year, we might have had a different outcome. We got beat fair and square. We just kind of lacked some organization and some – uh, you know, fresh legs or whatever, uh, you know, an extra guy. We, na- we lacked him last year for sure, missed him in the, in the finals. And uh, I think he brings a lot. I, 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 I saw what happened when we had two seven-game series last year, um, and it was a long road, and I just think having all that depth is such a strength to this team. And the fact is they play together. It's like the best locker room we've had in 20 years or one of the very best in terms of team chemistry. They, they get along and uh, and they want it for each other, which is the most important thing. You guys got to get Jalen Brown a plant guy, so that he's not so that, he, so, so, so that that's not an issue, or at least plastic yeah, we're gonna faces. Have, we're, <laughs> right, horticulture is going to be on the training camp. Uh, it's going to be a special hour in training camp. Wick, when, when you when you look at Tatum, I, I and you talk to him, I mean, you you see him on a daily basis. Can you kind of give us a little window into his mind? I know, well, I would feel he must be putting a lot of pressure on himself to show that last year in the championship, even though I struggled, that's not who I am. This year it looks like he's going to be, you know, all NBA again, and he's he's ascending in the direction of, you know, some of the greatest players. But needing to get over that hump in the sense of, okay, I need to obviously be able to win one, but show that I can't be consistent night in, night out throughout the whole playoffs. Is is that his mindset? Yeah, when I think of his mindset, we, I think of uh, it's a little bit like Paul Pierce who got calmer. I could I could, I was sitting there at the baseline at the time just watching Paul at the three-point line lining up game-winning threes, you know, and he gets calmer and calmer and almost breathes slower as the game comes down to the last minute. And I see, I, my first thought when you asked this was calm and, and focused, but he's not rattled. I mean, he's almost like an older soul. He's, he's very young still, you know, young, getting into the prime of his career and, but not necessarily even there yet, but he acts mature and calm and confident. And then he's just taken the sort of drives to the hoop to another level. Um, this year, that's really more of his game now, not just, not just threes. And, you know, he's thought it through. He addresses things. He takes games over. I don't know. He's just, but he's calm. Like, I don't think he's worried and frantic about anything. So if that answers your question, that's how I feel about him. Wick, sticking with pressure, I mean, the pressure on Joe Mazzula must be hard to handle for him. Uh, First-time head coach going in with such a talented team. In the conversations you've had with him, how has he been able to handle all that? Yeah, he is. Uh, he just thrives on this stuff. He takes it in like energy. He he like relishes the entire. I think you've seen him all year long. He's like, these are the positives. These are the negatives. We're not afraid of the negatives. We'll build on them and work on them. But he he takes it all like fuel into the fire. He's just he's he's been telling the guys all year. I'm sure, and I'm not in all those meetings or all those locker room conversations at all. I try to let them do their stuff and not be in the way. But I do know what goes on in general, and it's like he's like, here's where we plan to be, but this is what's going to happen. This is what we're going to experience. We're going to have ups and, ups and downs in the playoffs. We're going to – the ball isn't always going to go in. We're going to expect that, and we're going to get stronger. I mean, he, he's sort of like expect what's going to happen, get ready for it, and then execute the plan. I mean, I, I just – I find him to be such a – again, like an old soul. He's, he's beyond his years of experience. He is a very impressive guy, and I want this win for him as much as anything. Wick, considering the press conference that began during the summer and then where we are now, as you were just discussing about Joe Missoula, would you consider this a pretty successful regular season considering the the tumultuous offseason that preceded it? Yeah, I think I've answered that one too. That's a good question, but I mean, I think – I mean, it's just, it's actually, we don't, we don't mind what anybody writes, but everybody's like, well, these guys, you know, I don't know, God knows. And it's sort of like, well, we don't know what will happen, but this has been an incredible season. This has been, we're right where we want to be, which is with a nearly top seed. I mean, okay, it would have been better to be the first seed, but uh, uh, we'll just take that as it comes if we get to that round. So um, I, I don't know. I think this has been amazing. And this is, like I said, my favorite locker room, basically of all 20 of them, almost a favorite, if not 
very close, and uh, I just want the success for him. But for them, if they can, if they can get there. It'll be a lot of fun. Well, we can. I mean, if you were going to give, as long as we're talking about it, if you were going to look at the the way the way the season started, who, if you had to pick one, who would you give the credit to when it comes to overcoming that? Uh, well, the first person I talked to when it all broke early, which obviously we had nothing to do with, that was it certainly didn't serve our interest to let anything leak out, you know, 36 hours early. We just found out about it ourselves. But yeah. uh, anyway, um, the first person I talked to who called me was Jason Tatum. Yeah. And he's like, what are we going to do? And I said, we're going to go with Joe Missoula. Mizzou- and he goes, okay, I like Joe, young guy, but really good. Yeah, I see it. But I mean, what are we going to do? And I said, Jason, it's a player's league. I always hear that. It's a player's league. So, you know, let's prove it. You know, in other words, and he said, you got it. You know, he's, uh, we just have that kind of conversation where it's, it's uh, very uh, one-on-one and very, um, you know, just as partners. And, and I think he took it on his shoulders to not be distraught or rattled, but instead to lead us to a great season. I'd, so if, if there's one leader of the team in terms of, Everything. I mean, it's wrong to say that there's one. We don't have necessarily a captain or anything like that. But I would. The first person that came to mind was Jason. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we're excited. Mm-hmm. Can't wait. And uh, great. Um, I, Curtis and I were chatting earlier. I, we were talking about the Commanders, which will sell for what's the number, Curtis? Six, Six billion. Six billion. Yeah. Uh, I was standing next to the guy who's buying them yesterday when he was doing the deal. <laughs> in the he's, he's the owner of the Sixers, and he was at a sports conference I was at, and uh, he was doing the deal all day, and I watched him talk to Roger Goodell and steal the deal. Was wow. he trying to get it down to like 5'9 or something like that? <laughs> Direct deposit. Well, the working. I think if but, you're that close, you actually want to round it up and just make more news. <laughs> <laughs> but it does how does that work when it comes to an organization like the Celtics? Are there people that are reaching out and offering? Like, how does it when when you it, is that the way? You, do you ever get offers for the Celtics? Yes, um, yeah. every every year I must have four or five of them, but um, I, I they're not for sale, and because we just love it, and I have a large group of partners. We've all done this together for twenty years. It's like the time of our lives, and. Um, so we're, we're just in this for, for, for the long term. We love it. So it, it doesn't have any effect on us other than, um, realizing that when I overpaid back in 2002 uh, <laughs> to three, you know, December 31st, oh two, it wasn't <laughs> the worst business decision of all time, which some people thought it was, but we never did it for money. We did it for love. We really did. What's well, the minimum buy-in? Like if you know, I know you had a lot of partners. Any chance after seeing the what? Like what? You know, eventually, what's the minimum buy-in? Uh, I Wiggy, I think you should try. You should try to get your jersey. Wiggy, first. We've got I, great seats up in level nine. They're actually they really it's super nice up there. So the minimum buy-in is probably up there. But it's a great view. You'd be surprised. <laughs> and by the way, you cannot ever allow Rob Hale to be bought out because that is Greg's ticket guy. So. Yeah. <laughs> Rob's not going anywhere. Rob's not going anywhere. He loves it. Well, would you ever want, would you want uh, to own a franchise in another sport? Um, way back in the day, I looked at a little bit of that after we won in 08. Um, I looked at a couple other teams, but I, I really think that this works best for me because I get to be there at the practices, at the games. And then when something happens, I'm sort of ready to go with, maybe with a decision. And we were faced with that this this fall, as you recall, as you uh, mentioned. And so, you know, you kind of got to be hands on. I don't think this out of town stuff is any fun or not as much fun as this is my hometown team. I mean, this is the only thing I want to do. So I'm just staying focused on this. Speaking of that, how's the TV show going? <laughs> okay. I'm focused on this and the TV show and the band. Uh, <laughs> and Sin Coral. Uh, yep. TV show. <laughs> we just, Tonight we are filming uh, episode five in front of a live studio audience out in L.A. on the same you know sound stage as Gilligan's Island and I Love Lucy or whatever. Uh, don't know if we'll have quite the run they had, but um, people love the show. And Lenny Clark is now taking it over. He is he came in as a guest star, and now he's, they're writing him into every episode. So that's a little spoiler alert. But Lenny is freaking awesome. hilarious, and and he's made the show even funnier. So you can you ought to we ought to come on with Lenny after some, after filming and and get his comments because he, he loves it. We'll do it. Well, I thank you for taking the time this morning. Good thank luck. You. Uh, good luck going forward here, and we will see you, on, uh, see you tomorrow and see you on Sunday. 
And on Sunday, we've got an auction package for some great playoff seats, even Ooh. for Tuesday night game, court sides game, game two. So we will uh, unveil that together on uh, Sunday. All right. Not bad. Feed Wiggy, on the parquet. Maybe a little bit from you. All right. I'll be guys. up at level nine. <laughs> 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 All right, Wick Grosbeck. Thanks. My you treat. got it. Okay. See you guys. All right. <laughs> that is Wick Grosbeck, the owner of the Boston Celtics, here on Boston Sports Original WEEI.